hi friends happy new year and welcome back to my channel after my really long break what got so busy and i just couldn't keep up hopefully this year will be better fingers crossed today i have a really fun simple beginner friendly python tutorial for you guys it's a code with me session and we'll be building a python recipe app i really enjoyed building this and you will learn a lot from it so if there's something you are interested in definitely keep on watching but first don't forget to hit that subscribe button okay hope you've hit the subscribe button let's get started to start by showing you what the app would look like so when you run it this is what you get simple not too much and then you can set by recipe so because i'm nigerian i'm keeping true to my nigerian roots and search starting by searching for a nigerian dish famous jollof rice you can see it has like the ingredients a picture of the food and you could also click this recipe link that will take you to a link to the recipe tells you how to cook it and everything okay let's do a few more searches you could search for thai chicken curry and it gives you it tells you the name of the recipe gives you the ingredients shows a picture and you could click the link as well okay let's do one more search so let's say we search for this Eba. it's also a nigerian dish you cannot find the recipe so in this case it just shows a profile not found and tells you you cannot find the recipe so this is basically how it's going to work so let's go to the apis the main api we are going to use is the edaman api it has so much you could do nutrition analysis recipe licensing and all this and i really encourage you to look into it read up and see what you can do but for this app we'll be using the recipe search api so you would need to sign up to use the api it's completely free but you sign up and it will give you certain keys that allow you to access the api so you could go to the documentation go to recipe search api and you could just read it to know all the things that you can get from this api we are not i'm actually not using much i'm just going to use the ingredients and use the image and the label and you'll see how i use that but i really encourage you that when we're done go ahead explore this do as much as you want so for this api you can actually use it directly and i'll leave a link on how to use it directly with python but someone has been gracious enough to write a python wrapper so a library and this is it so you will need to install this python library that allows you to access the api directly there isn't much documentation on this there's also a simple documentation here that gives an example of how you can use it depending on what you want to do this python api may not be sufficient you may need to call the edamam api directly and i'll all like i said i'll leave a link on how to do that but for my purposes this api using this python api is sufficient because i'm not actually doing much with it this is a beginner friendly tutorial so i'll leave all these links here so that you can explore and even do more with it we'll be using kinta for the graphical user interface we will also have other libraries we are using but these are the main ones as i add other libraries i'll definitely explain why i'm using those libraries let's get started you need to install certain api first we need to import all the libraries that we are going to use so we are importing this byte io this image this library basically helps us to process the link to the image that we will get from the recipe so that we can show it next this library helps us to play the click sound you hear when i click search this edamam is obviously really important is what gives us access to the numerous food recipes this request is also used with the image the edamam api returns a link to the image and you would use this to process it and you definitely see how i use this kinta for the gui the web browser is what allows us to open a link next we are going to have constants for the click sound the title of the recipe app so this recipe app we're going to have a constant for this and then we're going to have a constant 
for certain dimensions and we'll see how we'll use all that as we go forward so this button click sound you need to have a sound in your directory structure you need to specify the path to the sound in this variable mine is in the upper directory and it's called clicks m4a next we need to tell it the window title and next we will be putting in dimensions for the space that the ingredients show up in we are going to be using object-oriented programming so i'll be creating a class i'm calling it recipe app and this is just the syntax for creating a class in python next let's talk about the structure of the app we have the search button we have a label saying the recipe we have something that takes the input we have this box that shows the recipe and then we have something that shows the image finally we have something that clicks the link so we want to create the structure we are going to need a function that runs the search so i'm going to start by creating a function that runs the search and i'm not really going to implement it just yet i'm just going to use pass if you're familiar with python pass just allows you to write a function without implementing it and then later you can come back and implement it using these double lines in python this two underscore just tells python that it's a private function and cannot be called externally next we need something that actually queries the api and gets the recipe and we're going to just call that simply get recipe and it's going to take in the query next we need something that shows the image next we're going to have something that gets the ingredients and we'll see how we use all these functions as we go along so it's going to take in the recipe we got and get the ingredients from that and finally we need a private a public function that runs the whole app and we're just going to call that run app and then with object oriented programming you need something that initializes the class this is the way to do that in python you need this init method and everything you need to initialize the class you are going to put it in here so that when an instance of the class is created you pass in these variables so for this to be able to query the api you need an app id and you need an app key you get this when you sign up for the edamam api next we are just going to make certain variables equal to these values that we pass that we will pass in and as we go along you will even understand better how i'm using this next with kinta to create the whole window we need to initialize that window and we will just be calling that window this just initializes the window next we need to create the dimensions for the window but we want it to be scalable so if you remember initially before we started searching it was very small and then when we search and it shows up an image it becomes bigger and that's what we want we want it to be able to auto resize so we're not going to specify any dimensions for the window next we need a color for the window in the app i have is green but we can definitely try making it another color and the way to do that is just with this syntax it tells it okay the background color should be a particular color one website i usually i really like is this color hunt many people have colors that match and you can just use these colors in whatever you are designing for this maybe i could just use this color copy so i'm just going to put this color here and really when you're experimenting just go ahead and use whatever color you want it's going to work next we have to put in the title of the window and the reason we are using constants is because we want to be able to change these values anytime and if there's any value you feel like you want to be able to change go ahead and make it a constant so for example this color if you want to be able to continue to change it you can add another variable here call it color put that variable here instead of actually specifying a color next we want to do this part the search recipe and that's a label so we'll use a kinta label i'm just going to call this search label and use the kinta label for function this label is going to be in the main window and then the text we want it to show in our case it was showing search recipe you can come up with something else you want again we want a particular color so let's just go back to color hunt. we can give it this color 
next we want to be able to tell it which part of the window it should show up in and for that we will be using Kinta's grid so there are different ways of placing elements in Kinta there's one called pack but I'll be using grid in this case just imagine a grid literally a grid so you have rows and columns so you have to tell it which row to place the item in and which column so we want this set label to be in the top left we don't want the items to be joined together so we will use pad x just to give it space between each element so this pad x it was is what gives this space here and this space here if you want to space horizontally use pad x and if you want to space vertically use pad y next the part that takes in what you are searching for we're going to call that search entry and we are going to use Kinta's entry. In this case, we are going to give it a width of 40. And again, the master is window. It's actually the same thing here. I just did not specify master here. You can as well do. You can also put the master in label here. We also want to put its position. So in this case, the row. So it's beside the set label. So the row remains the same. But the column has changed. Again, we are giving it spacing of 5. And we are giving it padding of 10. Pad Y of 10. So horizontally is space with 5 and vertically spaced with 10 and finally for the beginning we need the search button and we'll be using Kinta's button function here in this case we have to tell it which command to run so command basically calls a different function when this button is pressed we want it or click we want it to call this function which is why we are saying run search query every other thing is the same the text the name of what is going to show i think i would want it to be the same color as this and then finally we need to position it it's going to be on the same row as the previous ones but on a different column so it's going to be on column two row zero so we have a basic structure we have Having done much of an implementation but let's go ahead and see if we can run the code and see what happens it's probably not going to do anything it's just going to show how the window is going to look like to do that we need to implement run app run app is actually what shows the window so for that we're going to use Kinta's function called main loop after doing everything with a Kinta GUI to actually show it and get it to run you need to use main loop on the window you are working with all this is a class you need to create an instance of the class so for that we'll be using main um, first of all we're going to pass in the app ID and the app key so right now I'm actually not calling the API just yet so we actually don't need to pass in the app ID and app key it's not really going to check if these values are valid but as we proceed we'll need to enter it so this creates an instance of the class with this app ID and app key and this runs the app I'll later add my app ID and app key but obviously I cannot record that for security reasons so just believe that when it's eventually working I put in my app ID and app key here so now let's run the app and this is what it looks like it can take in terms but I mean we're not really doing anything so it's not going to show up so let's go ahead let's continue it's looking good so far first of all let's call the function that gets the recipe so the actual function that is going to talk to the Edaman API and get the recipe. All the other just processes it and shows it, but this is what gives us the ability to even get the recipe. We'll start by creating an object using the Edaman, and we're going to call it Edaman object. We're just basically going to create an instance of this, an instance of the Pi Edaman object. And to do that, you need to specify the recipe app ID, and we have that already. And we also need to specify the recipe app key. Next, we're going to tell it what we want it to do because it has a lot of functions you can run, but we just want it to search the recipe. So we're going to call the object and search recipe. This query is actually what you are going to impute, what you are searching for. So we're just going to do that. And this actually gives you so many results for a particular query. For our case, I'm just going to use the first result in the list of results it gives. You can even modify this to show you multiple results but I'm just going to show one so I'm just going to iterate through this query result is actually a type called generator not a list I would put a link to what a generator is in Python and you could read up on that 
so I'm getting only the first recipe. Next, we need to process what we are going to get from this recipe and it's going to return a lot of things. So if you look at the API and you go to recipe, these are all the things you can get from it. But we're just going to use image and ingredients. So from the recipe, we need to get the ingredients from it and we need to show the image. So let's implement the get ingredients function. We are just going to also go ahead and show the ingredients in Kinta. The ingredients are going to be shown in a Kinta text box. So we're just going to do that right here. The most of the Kinta widgets taking the same variables, they just do different things. And once again, we want to specify a color for this. We want a light color, so let's just use this color. We need to specify location in the window. It's going to be in column 1, row 4, and we're going to give it a padding of 10. If we search and we reset, whenever we keep researching, we want it to keep populating the text area with the new recipe. So to do that, we need to delete what was there before. And this is how you do it using Kinta. We want to take into account the possibility that the recipe we search for may not be found. So we always have to check if it's empty. And if it's empty, we just want to tell it to show on the text area that that recipe was not found. And to do that, you use insert on the text or the Kita text method. You put this and just tell it what you want to show. Now, in the case where it was found, this is what we want to do. First of all, we want to show it the recipe label, which is the name of the recipe it's going to show you. Next, we want to iterate through all the ingredients and present them like a list. So for that, this is what we do. We iterate through all the ingredients in the recipe. And for each item, we insert the ingredients. And this slash n is basically just going to a new line and putting a dash beside the new line. The next thing we want to do is show the image. When you query the Edamam API, one of the things it outputs is a link to the image. So we want to be able to show that image in Kinta as well well so to do that first of all we need to be able to talk to the url on the internet so for that we'll be using request it's a python library and you also need to install that then we're going to use the byte.io this line basically just processes the image and then this line resizes the image so we want it to be the same size every single time we don't know what size it's going to be on the web page but we want it to always give us the same size lines just process the image next we want to show the image in kinta we would be using a label and a photo function in kinta and then this would also position the image so now we have something that gets the recipe we have something that gets the ingredients from the recipe we have something that shows the image from the recipe from well, nothing is actually calling these functions just yet so the next thing we need is something that calls this function and we want all these things to be done whenever we click the search button so when we click the search button it's going to call this run search query so we are going to implement the run search query whenever we click the button if you notice we play a sound we play the click sound and to play the sound we are going to use this play sound library so the first thing we need is something that takes in what we search for. When we put in a search term, we want something to be able to capture what we enter. Kinta has functions that do all this. To do that, we just call the search entry widget that we already have and we do a get on it. So now we have what we are searching for. Next, we need to get the recipe using this search. So we're just going to simply call get recipe. So we are going to say recipe and we're going to do that with a query. We need to check if we found that recipe or not so if we find the recipe we are just going to get the image from it and this is just how you get the image from the recipe using that particular pie and library and next we need to get the recipe url the link to the recipe here now if you did not get the recipe we want to still be able to show an image we want to show a 404 image you can show whatever image you like the thing I did was just go to Google and search for prof or image food. And there are so many options you can pick from. So for this, I'm just going to copy this image address here. And I'm going to tell it that if it doesn't find the recipe, then this is the image I want it to show. But there will be no URL. And I'm just going to put an empty string here. So we have the recipe and we have the image. Next, we want to show the image and we want to get the ingredients from the recipe. 
so guys we have all this now i'm just going to run the code to show you what it looks like i'm going to put in my app id and app key but i can't really show that here okay guys so i've entered my api app key and app id so i'm just going to go ahead and run the function and let's search for something this is you see it's slightly different from the one i showed you before because we use different colors but it's essentially the same thing let's search coconut rice so we're almost there let me search for something that will not be found um it's a nigerian dish called banga i know it will not be found because i checked and in this case you see the image is showing us slightly different from what we have originally so we're almost there the only thing missing is the link to the recipe let's work on that we want something that gets the link to the recipe and opens it up we want a button that does that so we are going to create a function and i mean there are different ways you can create your function you can create it externally since the function is going to be used in this run search query i'm just going to create it here maybe we can call it open recipe link and again when we click the button i want it to play a sound and i want it to open your a url which is this recipe url we have here so we have the function but we don't have any button so again we're just going to create a button very similar to what we did here in fact we can just copy it and modify it and i'm going to change the command it calls which is this lastly we just have to specify the location and in this case it is below the image so where is the image located the image is located in column one and root six so we want it to be below the image so we're going to put in the same column for a different row row seven and we want to give it a vertical padding of 10 as well let's just test it and see what happens so we're going to run the app Okay guys, looks like it looks like we have an error because this is not exactly what we want it to look like. So let's go back and see what the mistake is. Oh, okay guys. So if you see here, you could see that the search and the entry are on the same row and colon for some reason. It's going to be on the same row but on a different colon. So we're going to put that in colon two. If we run it again, we could see that things are back to normal. So let's just go ahead and uncomment the portion that links to the recipe. So guys, that was a perfect example of what happens when things are not properly placed. You just need to debug and figure it out. Let's just run that. So let's search for something now, but the recipe link is not yet showing. More debugging. Uh, if we go, we can actually see the error here. It says recipe app object has no attribute recipe app open recipe link. And I immediately know what the problem is. So in this case, this function doesn't belong to the whole class. It just belongs to this function. So we can't call it with self. We just call it without self. And I think this should fix it. Um, so if we search for something again, let's do our coconut rice. Perfect. Now we see the link to the recipe and we can click it. It shows us the link to the recipe. Let's go ahead and even do another set. Let's set for tacos and see what happens. And this is a recipe to tacos. Again, you can click the link and then you can see the recipe. Finally, let me do one more search for the not found. If we search for Eba, which is a Nigerian dish, and I know it's not found because I've tried it. It shows our beautiful not found image. That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial and I hope you were able to follow along. I really encourage you to even go further, modify this app. For example, for a particular search, you get multiple recipes. Try putting a previous and a next button to scroll through different recipes for the same search. And if you want me to modify this app to add that, leave a comment in the description box. If you liked watching this video, please hit that like button, leave a comment, share with a friend and don't forget to subscribe as always guys remember impossible is nothing bye